Y'all see it fine? Yep. Awesome. Okay. So today we'll cover uh, information of technology and all of its issues and how it can be hacked and some things that have been done before. Uh, make sure you sign in. Uh, the QR code is, should be working now. Uh, if you're not a part of our Discord already, this is our Discord. Um, this is for anyone watching on YouTube. Uh, you can use the QR code or the link below. Some announcements. Officer applications have been extended to the end of the week. Um, the QR code for it is to the right. There is currently an ongoing CTF that ends on Friday at 3 p.m. And next Wednesday, we will have a stress buster since uh, exams are approaching. And we'll play some Jackbox games. All right. So first, what is Internet of Things? Uh, Internet of Things are the many devices connected to the internet that are data with each other. There are a lot of them, uh, a lot more. There are people on this earth. Um, is it a good thing, a bad thing? We'll let that, you come to that conclusion. So what can be an IoT device? Pretty much anything you can think of. Uh, mobile phones, smart refrigerators, smart watches, fire alarms, door locks, Bicycle sensors, fitness trackers, security systems, and even diapers. Um, yes. Pampers made this an actual thing in 2019. So now we can start tracking data very young. Um, fun for the whole family. <laughs> um, so what is vulnerable? Uh, everything. Some stories. Uh, someone hacked a baby monitor and talked to a child. Uh, a fridge sent spam emails. Um, someone hacked a Bluetooth teddy bear. Even a fish tank. Uh, hackers stole an entire database through a thermometer in a fish tank. And also, some, yeah, some kid some teenager was literally just like, I'm bored, so I'm just going to hack 1,500, yeah, 150,000 printers and throw in Russia, because why not? Um, so let's learn more about how these devices work and what we can do with them. So some ways that uh, inter Internet of Things devices connect uh, using Zigbee, LoRaWAN, LTE, and IEEE, so like Wi-Fi and uh, Halo, which are um, different Wi-Fi connected ways. And these are useful because we can see different ways of hacking functions. So for Zigbee, it uses Encryption keys of two types, either a network key or a link key. And okay, a network key uh, is distributed and shared among every device in the network. And a link key is uh, used between two devices at a time. Uh, Zigbee can be attacked and others can be attacked by physical attacks, key attacks, and replay and injection attacks. So let's break down some of these attacks. Physical attacks. Um, OK. Oh, many radios residing on this network uh, employ a hard-coded encryption key loaded in the RAM memory device devices powered and being distributed flashed on all the devices in a Zigbee network. The probability of replacing the keys is very low. So knowledge hackers can resort to setting up special serial interfaces 
on the Zigbee device in order to intercept the encryption keys moved from RAM during power up. Uh, once physically connected to a Zigbee device through a simple serial interface such as Bus Pirate, an attacker can unravel the security of an entire Zigbee network and potentially intercept and alter data. <clears throat> uh, Bus Pirate is a pretty cheap source development tool, and uh, I'm just giving some things that can be used. Uh, key attacks are remote attacks aiming to snatch encryption keys and are possible due to methodologies known as over-the-air key delivery and pre-shared keying. Uh, over-the-air is typically applied to more sophisticated Zigbee networks to ensure better security and updating. Its security protection can be circumvented with a device that mimics Zigbee node and picks up the transmissions exchanged among internal devices. These packets can be analyzed and decrypted later on. An attack of this kind will most be almost impossible to detect, and uh, you can do it using KillerBee, which is a tool set combining hard hardware and software, which can intercept and analyze these packets. Remote hacks are also <clears throat> also distinguish themselves with high stealthiness, and the intruder can extend a range of coverage by creating high-powered transmitters or special Yagi antennas. Replay and injection attacks are key-based attacks combined with packet replay and or injection, whose goal is to fool Zigbee devices into executing unauthorized actions. Zigbee units are particularly vulnerable to these attacks since they're equipped with a lightweight design of the protocol with weak replay protection. And because of this, the captured packets from Zigbee nodes are sent back in a replay attack scenario to make it look like they come from the originating node. Um, since Zigbee units have a weak replay protection, they're particularly vulnerable to these kinds of attacks. So let's look at an example. Um, in 2015, the Australian, or not Australian, excuse me, the Austrian security researchers, Tobias Zillner and Sebastian Strobel, uh, talked about uh, the testing that they did for a, a new security testing tool they made uh, called SecB uh, at a Black Hat USA talk in 2015. And in order to assess the security of real life devices, such as a home automation system, uh, Zigbee enabled door lock and a smart lighting solution uh, were used in this process. So how did they hack this system? So first, they use signal jamming. Uh, Zigbee is designed for energy saving and low power communication, and targeting Zigbee channel with noise easily obstructs the communication. Uh, step two, they repair to restore the connectivity. Step three is reconfiguration, where a typical unaware user, upon noticing the loss of connection, attempts to reconnect, usually by pressing a button on a remote control unit. And step four is where you can steal the T, the, the T, the key. Acquiring the transmitted network key, if the user is targeted successfully, the hacker can leverage the, the hacker will leverage the repairing to their advantage and take the key. And step five is where you have control over the system because you have the key. Um, the home automation system has no setting that can reset or change the applied network key. And because of this, the average user cannot lock the intruder out. Um, so other than Zigbee, oh wait, still Zigbee. Okay. Uh, as for the smart lighting solution, uh, like light bulbs, uh, they're always sending beacon requests in an effort to find new networks to join. By sending a reset to factory default command, a hacker will make the bulb seek for Zigbee networks, which will join the first network available automatically without even interacting with the user. This Zigbee specific quality of the network can be used for location purposes. When the devices start connecting, they send out beacon requests and data can be captured based on this. Under the so-called Internet of Things map project, um, one security firm successfully created a searchable database called Shodan, uh, which is the first search engine for the internet-connected appliances. Uh, in a previous talk, one of uh, yeah, in a previous talk, 
that Lathe gave. He talked about Shodan and how you can use it. So it is useful. Other than Zigbee. Bluetooth. So IoT devices can also connect through Bluetooth. Here are some tools that you can use. Uh, don't do anything illegal. Uh, that's also something important. Please do not do that. That wouldn't be good for you. Um, but anyway, let's get into the tools. So Blue Log is a Bluetooth site survey tool. It scans the area to find as many discoverable, devi discoverable devices in the area and then logs them to a file. Blue Mahu is a GUI-based set of tools for testing the security of Bluetooth devices. Blue Ranger is a simple Python script that uses i2 cap pings to locate Bluetooth devices and determines their approximate dis distances. BT Bitscanner is a GUI-based tool scan that scans for discoverable devices within range. And Redfang is a tool that enables you to find hidden Bluetooth devices. SpoofTooth is a Bluetooth spoofing tool. And these are all used in Kali Linux. Some attacks that you can do using these tools. Blueprinting uh, is the process of footprinting. Blue snarfing is an attack that takes the data from the Bluetooth enabled device and it can include SMS messages, calendar info images, the phone book, and chats. Blue bugging is where the attacker is able to take control of the target's phone. Bluever was developed as a proof of concept tool for this purpose. Blue jacking is when the attacker sends a business card text or text message that if the user allows to be added to their contact list, enables the attacker to continue to set additional, send additional messages. Blue smack is a denial of service attack against Bluetooth devices. Okay, and then Wi-Fi. Out of all of these, Wi-Fi is one of the simpler ways of hacking IoT devices. Um, the most difficult would probably be LTE, cell service. Um, so Wi-Fi hacking tools, uh, air crack, NG air cracking is one of the most popular wireless password cracking tools. Uh, it uses algorithms to recover wireless passwords by capturing packets. Once enough packets have been gathered, it tries to recover the password. To make the attack faster, it implements a standard FMS attack with some optimizations. Uh, Wi-Fi WPS WPA tester is one of the most popular Wi-Fi password hacker tools known for breaking the security and works on both rooted and Android devices. This app tests the connection to access points uh, with a WPS pin and needs Android 4.0 and up for running. Kane Enable is a popular password cracking tool de developed to intercept network traffic and then discover passwords by brute forcing them using cryptanalysis attack methods. It can also recover wireless network keys by analyzing routing pro protocols. Kismet is a packet sniffer, network detector, and intrusion detection system for the 802.11 wireless local area networks. It works with any Wi-Fi card which supports RFMON mode. It passively collects packets to identify networks and detects hidden networks. It builds on a client-server modular architecture and is available for Linux, OSX, Windows, and BSD platforms. NetStumbler is one of the well-known Windows tools to find open wireless access points, and it's free. I'm sure most of these are free. I haven't looked into every single one, like price-wise, but they're all, most of the resources I um, am providing are either free or cheap. A, a lot of them will have like free versions. Yeah. Uh, do you know any that off the top of your head, Lathe? Um, I don't remember the name, but there's like a few uh, like hardware pen testing suites that are they have like licensed versions with support, but then they're free normally. Yeah. Um, NetStumbler. Oh, I know. I said NetStumbler. Uh, there's also a a trimmed down version of the tool known as Mini Mini Stumbler, uh, which is basically the same thing as NetStumbler, um, used for more driving, verifying network configurations, and finding locations with a poor network, detecting unauthorized access points, and more. And finally, AirJack is a Wi-Fi 802.11 packet injection tool 
which is very useful in injection, injecting forged packets and making a network down by deni denial of service attack. This tool can also be used for a man in the middle attack in the network. All right. Let's see. Uh oh. All right. And I included this. This just shows uh, various IT characteristics of things like the cloud communications, gateways. Yeah, the things on the left and their potential security weaknesses and targets. It's a bit blurry. I'm not sure if you can read it very well. But if you look back in the video, this information is here. Um, so as we know, companies don't really like to do a lot about fixing vulnerabilities and problems. Uh, so how can you protect yourself? Uh, well, you could live in a cave and avoid using IoT devices at all costs, but that is not always realistic. So the best thing that I can recommend is to do your research and stay updated on the security of the products that you wish to use and the vulnerabilities that are they are most likely to, uh, most likely to experience, and basically just stay up to date. Um, all right. A lot of times you can also sandbox them on your network if they don't have like an internet component. Okay. Yeah. So with that, does anybody have any questions? All right, that is all. If you have any questions, I'll be here and there are some officers in the chat, or yeah.